Welcome to Crazy Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Nebula 2. I am in the middle of building a small bodied acoustic, acousto electric guitar. This thing is insane. It is basically the size of a Les Paul, uh, but is being built with traditional, modified traditional acoustic guitar techniques. Well, today is going to be interesting. Today I am finally getting to the point that's been causing me some little anxiety. I haven't built a, an instrument of this ilk in it's more than a decade for sure. Uh, but uh, today I'm going to be finalizing how the back and the front are uh, affixed, the geometry of all of that sort of stuff. There's going to be sanding, there's going to be planing, there's going to be chiseling, there's going to be cleaning, there's going to be splitting of wood with an axe. With that being said, here's what brought us up to this point. Done. The build so far. Burn it. Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Most people would think that an acoustic instrument is basically a slab. You've got a thin top, a thin back, the sides, and yet smoosh them together and you're done. But that is not actually the case. Uh, what you generally have is a curve. Uh, a fairly substantial curve on the top and a less substantial curve on the back. And essentially this uh, brings in a little bit of tension, a little bit of strength. It helps fight against the string, uh, the how much of the strings is pushing down. What a sentence. That's what it's for. Strength fights against the string tension pushing into the top. Uh, it pushes the vibrations out to the sides and then to the back and the whole instrument vibrates and is just de-lovely. I did say that. Crikey, maybe I've had too much coffee today. Either way, with this instrument, right at the beginning the plan was not to build it in this fashion. It was not to build it um, with bent sides even. It was going to be a solid body hollowed out and then an acoustic-ish braced top with um, parallel bracing down the center as if it was a jazz guitar and we're, we're just not doing that. Now with that method I was planning on having a modern radius carve as we call it at Crimson Guitars which is essentially a very nice curve dropping 10 to 15 millimeters at each edge, and it's basically making the guitar conical. That's not what we actually need in this one. What we need is, well, something like this. We have CNC'd a circle, a cone, a depression, a dip, a dale. I don't know. Uh, into this board and I'm going to use this to sand that shape onto the top and the back. I'm then going to ha, sand that shape onto the sides so that I can then glue the top and the back to that curve. The braces are going to have a similar curve in and we will use these to glue the braces to the top and the back respectively and it's all going to be fun and games and gloriousness. I think I need another coffee, maybe, to bring me down? What do you think? Anyway, at this stage, we've got this. She's looking good. The kerf 
that we glued in last week is proud in many places. And I'm gonna plane that down first because, well, planing something down is both more enjoyable than sanding and a little bit more rapid than braiding it away. Yes, onwards to the hand planes of glory. Luban, Kongsheng, Luthier's plane, low angle. I choose you. I choose you. <laughs> she may have a pokeball. This here obviously is a weak point, and when I'm sanding it, the whole point of gluing that, that in and installing this was so that when I'm doing the sanding on these big plates, the, the instrument doesn't disintegrate. And it's still not quite strong enough. I need to have one of these going across here, and seeing as all the hardware store, well, they're actually not closed at the moment, but uh, I don't particularly want to go shopping right now. So I'm just gonna take a couple of these and uh, make my own spreader clamp. Quickly. Okay, so what we've got here is, that's fairly loose and will be on the end. To make, to push that out on both sides. But then we've got adjustment here as well to push against the central section on both of those. So I can until I get to a point where, where the threaded bar hits each other, I can adjust and push out. It's not quite as uh, straightforward as a turnbuckle would be, but I also don't have a turnbuckle here that is big enough. So essentially, this will do. That's pushing that one out. That's pushing that one out. And there we go, solid. Now we need to take a shot outside because it's raining and it's my favorite light in the world. It's just come down. Let's get on with this then. So what I need to do, is get a great big piece of sandpaper. Really. That works. This is awkward <laughs> uh, and something I've never done before, but uh, hey, live and learn.
this is gonna be a long one. So here you can see the outside section, I'm, I've been removing material, but as you go in, there still isn't a good joint. And I haven't even touched that yet, but I have touched the front of it. So I need to, uh, well, I need to spend a little bit more time front and back, making sure that all of the pencil is gone. All right then, uh, it is a little bit later. It is definitely a little bit later. Uh, but, well, I suppose I stopped for dinner, to be honest. This hasn't taken, it didn't take all that long. And honestly, I think that if it had been a standard instrument without all of this funny business going on. It would have been fine. But uh, anyway, as it stands, I've removed all of the material required. And we have our angle. You can't really see it. We have our curve, as we say. Have a look at how, how small that goes there, the curving. And that gives you an idea. Oh, I like this. I like this very much. Okay, so people have been asking me why spend so much time on the inside, and it is going to be seen. It definitely is. We will be able to see a lot of the internals. Is that not just so stunning? You see that? Now, we're gonna make, we're gonna have bracing across the back, with a curve in the brace, we're gonna have bracing across the front with a curve on, uh, with curves built into that, and the whole thing is gonna be just delicious. But anyway, the point of this was to actually show you what you're gonna be able to see uh, once the instrument is together. Let's just, just get a light source. Where are we? Isn't that gorgeous? So you see, from here, there is stuff. And you'll be able to see a lot, actually, of the inside. And even at the moment. There. I do believe we're coming together, and I do believe I need to shut up and get on with the build. See you in the morning. Next day. And uh, I have flipped the sides around in the mold. They're nice and solid. I've added a few extra clamps. This little fiddly bit was flapping around in the wind a little bit too much. And uh, I wasn't happy with, I wasn't happy with that edge as well. Uh, again, we've got sound holes and stuff and it's just not as supportive as it could have been. So uh, yeah. Drill in at an angle with a force in a bit, and uh, and you're done. Onwards. This is boring, but we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're there, actually. <laughs> done. No pencil. There we go. Now, there, there is my, my problem. This is gonna be uh, an electroacoustic guitar and I, I need to have a jack. I need to have a jack, period, that is it. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments or questioned me, in fact, probably many of you have questioned what I'm gonna do about the jack and I thought that 
I might be able to do something, uh, use a traditional acoustic end pin jack. The other option is I bend another piece of material and have it so my jack would be there and have a piece of material go across those four supports and it solidifies that whole section and we'll have the jack going through there. I'd obviously fill that as well. It, it wouldn't be wrong to put an end pin jack on there uh, from, a, from a technical point of view, from a use point of view, etc. It just, with a guitar of this shape and size, it's just a little weird, really. But that will be in a different episode. For now, let's move on with the back. I need to make some braces and yeah, let's go. So this is the curve that we're working with for the back at least, about an eighth of an inch in the middle, four or five millimeters. Now, what I have here is a piece of uh, brace spruce, almost perfectly quarter sawn. It's, it's just delightful. I'm gonna split it so that we don't have any grain runoff. Uh, in other words, weak points. The reason to split it with an ax or a fro or something like that is that that split will follow the grain and you won't have any grain running off the edge and uh, that means that the brace will be stronger, essentially. Width-wise, I'm going for about 20 millimeters uh, for this, which will then be uh, cut down or planed down. That is what I'm after. Better, no. This is sharp. Have I ever mentioned vintagetoolshop.com? Split it and then plane it flat with your uh, plane of choice, number five, number six, number seven even. Yeah. I, I, low angle, it, it's up to you, it's up to you. Something, something nice and long and, and sharp. So what was 20 millimeters thick is about 13 or 14. And, uh, yeah, we're good. Yeah, GoPro, fun times. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. Once you've planed them to dimension, draw the curve that you want on it. And there's a nice little trick for that. We've already got a sanding dish. You put your flat brace on the sanding dish, put your pencil on the sanding dish, and draw away, like so. Then it is just a case of uh, using a bandsaw or just the plane, plane the curve in, and then tidy it up with a little bit of sandpaper, and you will have something perfect. We all need a centre line. At this stage, 
quite frankly, I need to make a go deck. And uh, I have the requisite threaded rod. Essentially, what we need to do is drop that, is install this here using chunky threaded rod at each corner. And uh, in between them, I can then, you've all seen this, you've all seen this. You basically put a, a bit of dowel or uh, carbon fiber rod or something like that. And that acts as a clamping clamp between the two, the top and the back. And uh, there are other ways to do it. I could get a random piece of wood and clamp it down. I could even, with this, have clamping cores on the back or a flexible MDF clamping core and just use normal clamps. It would confirm, conform to the shape on the uh, braces, I hope, but that's not what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do this without talking. It is very simple. I've got bolts, I've got bar, and I'm gonna put this together in a box like shape. Too tall. I don't want to chop these off either, just in case, I don't know, I want, want them. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do something. I also am aware, and so are you, that this is probably not going to be strong enough with just a sheet of ply. I'm going to be screwing on some supports on the sides, so these can actually go through quite a bit further than they currently are. So let's do that. <laughs> that was supposed to be so much more elegant than that. This is also still too tall, far too tall. Let's use a story stick instead of a ruler. So I've got a stick, draw a line on it. That's where I want everything to go. There we go. What next do you say? Uh, so I've got this there. I'm not gonna create uh, any more strength just yet. This is very, very high quality birch and I'm hoping, birch ply, I'm hoping it's gonna be all right. Uh, I need something to essentially wedge in between the top and the bottom plates and act as my clamps. Again, you've seen what this is supposed to be. Um, now, uh, amusingly, I've just been told that I need to be shielding. Uh, the NHS has decided that uh, since I'm diabetic, I probably should never leave my house again. So I'm not going shopping to buy uh, dowel or anything like that. And uh, uh, so I'm going to be making my own stuff out of tongue and groove. I want the sticks to be basically exactly the same height, if not actually a little bit shorter. If you think about it this way, we've got a top and the and the thing that we're sticking on, uh, and we want to bend this in between the two. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest. Well, I'm going to cut it to exactly that height. We can always adjust the nuts up and down if necessary, or chop them to length later. Let's go uh, process some wood. Okay, so this is not the ideal material to do this in. I am fully expecting one or two of these to crack. This is pine, it's got inclusions and knots and things, and, and that happens. Okay, so hence I made hopefully a fair few more than I need. However, give me a chunk of something. That will do. You're talking a relatively gentle pressure here. It's a perfect, a perfect joint. It's sanded nice and flat on both sides. It doesn't need that much. So yeah, well, let's, let's see what happens. 
I have center lines marked on the braces. And they don't need many bits of wood to hold them in. Just something like that. I'm going to poop myself in one of these snaps. I know it. Actually, that's perfect. Maybe I should go up to the house and get some salt. That's fine. Slid a little, little bit that way, but that's all right. <laughs> this is what I was worried might happen. As you put too much pressure on, it loosens the pressure on the others. And if there isn't enough bend in them, they fall out. Right, so we've got two done. We've got two done. I think I'm going to go for the rest and see what happens. Yep. <laughs> okay, there you are. Yet again, me rushing to get footage uh, to the editor to get edited on time has made me jump a step, even though I fully knew that, that was an issue. Uh, basically, I need to support the top section of this piece of ply. In fact, both of them. They need some cross members, uh, screwed down nice and tight uh, in order to make it stronger. I can't get any further than this without the, the bulge in the top losing, uh, basically stopping the tension from going there. Can you tell I'm a little bit pissed at myself? Just a teensy bit. And my phone is still on. How unprofessional can you get, Ben Crow? Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I'm leaving it at this. I am going to, when these two are cured, I'm going to come back and glue in that fourth member. Uh, I'm also going to clean up the glue while it is still wet. I'm going to get in there and sort that out. But for now, this is the episode. Next week, next week I'm carving braces. I'm gluing in all of the braces on the top. I'm gluing the back to the ribs, those beasties down there. And we're going to have the last little bit that is scaring me is the Spanish joint in this neck because it's all just a little bit weird and the neck break angle. Wow, the light in here is terrible. I'm sorry, we've got sunshine and stuff and nonsense. I need to just live in a cellar somewhere. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for your support. Click like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Goodbye.